Hi and welcome to this program on trends in ionization. I want to look at two trends. In one trend we focus on simply one element and continually remove electrons from it. We call this successive ionization. In the second half of the program we'll look at a trend as we move across the periodic table in a little bit more depth. Let's consider if we would uh, perhaps the element sodium, Na, with its 11 electrons. So in the 1s orbital we'd have two electrons with opposite spin, it's indicated by our arrows. In the 2s, we'd have two more. In the 2p, six electrons. And finally, in the 3s, one electron. So what we're going to do in the first ionization is remove this electron. So we would begin with sodium in the gaseous state. We would add some ionization energy to it. That would then result in the production of a sodium with a plus one charge in the gaseous state. And we've liberated one electron. That energy value is plotted down here. If we now continue with this species, so we now have the sodium plus one in the gaseous state, Again, we add some energy to it. This time we'll produce sodium with a 2 plus charge and we'll liberate a further electron. That value you'll see here. So we can continue to do this until we've removed all of sodium's electrons, with the last one being sodium with a 10 plus charge. We add the final bit of ionization energy as indicated here to remove that particular electron and we would now end up with sodium with an 11 plus charge and an electron. And we can't go any further because we've removed all of the um, electrons. So this is what I call successive ionization. The first thing you'll notice in the trend is there's a general increase. So let's make note of that. So as more electrons are removed the increased charge increases the force of attraction and as a result the ionization energy goes up. So that's a general trend but we also get these tremendous big jumps. Now what's causing those jumps? Here I notice it happening between the removal of the ninth and the tenth electron. If we go back to this diagram over here at the side, the electron configuration, let's look at the removal of nine electrons. So we remove those, we've removed all of those, that's seven, eight, nine. We've removed all of those electrons. All we have left here is this. So when I'm going to remove the tenth electron indicated here, this would be the tenth electron, I'm coming down a whole energy level. I'm coming from energy level number two down to energy level number one. This energy level is a lot closer. If we look at sort of the distance from the nucleus, that distance is considerably closer than trying to remove it from the second energy level. So this distance here is much, much smaller than the distance that I have over here. So you tend to get these jumps when you move to a closer energy level. Now, one might ask, um, when you removed this first electron, you were going from the 3s to the 2p, uh, why don't you see a big jump down in here? Well, there actually is a big jump. The problem is our choice of scale here. These numbers become so large, they make this change look rather small. So here's what we can do about that. If we use a different set of scales, so on this side, instead, I've plotted the logarithm of the ionization energy. I can see in this case that actually was a big jump, relative speaking, between 1 and 2. I was going from the order, I think down here, it's around 400, up to something that was in the order of several thousand. 
Uh, I think it was about 8,000. So the problem is the choice of scale over here doesn't allow me to see this big jump. So if one plots the log of the ionization energy, you can see these jumps a little bit more clearly. Now let's take a look at the second trend across the periodic table. You can recall from our earlier unit that there's a general trend going across. So let's restate what that trend was. Generally speaking, as you go across, so in this case, I believe I'm beginning with the element uh, lithium here and moving across to the element neon from left to right across the periodic table. Generally speaking, as the number of protons goes up, our force of attraction goes up. And as a result, the ionization energy goes up. Now that's a general trend, but we do find a couple of places where some odd things happen and we get actual decreases. So let's take a look at the cause of this first one. Here I'm going from the element beryllium to the element boron. So the element beryllium with its four electrons would have um, in the 1s, so let me start down here, two electrons in the 1s, and it would now have two electrons here. When I go to the element boron, I add an electron here in the 2p. The 2p is actually at a little higher energy level than the 2s. This increase in distance that results from going to the 2p results in a weakening of the attraction to the nucleus and actually makes this electron a little bit easier to remove, even though I have added more protons. So my second point here is that p orbits are slightly further away. resulting in a weakening of the pull. So our force of attraction actually goes down a bit, and as a result, the ionization energy goes down a bit. Now as we continue to add more electrons, then once again we get greater uh, attraction from the nucleus, and we start in the, backwards swing, in the back swing back up the trend. Now what's happening over here between element number 7 and 8? So here we're looking at nitrogen moving over to oxygen. So again, nitrogen's configuration, we'll start with our 1s, we'll put two in there, one there, there, and then nitrogen has one electron in each of its orbits. When I come to add the next electron, let's mark it here in red for oxygen, what I've done here is I've now put a second electron in the same orbital. This results, and you might think of as crowding or excessive repulsion. I now get a little bit more repulsion because I've crowded two electrons into the same orbital. That repulsion helps make it easier to remove this red electron. So when I go to remove it through the act of ionization, the repulsion from the neighboring electron is helping push it away. So. the doubling up of a p orbital causes repulsion, making it easier to remove the electron. So that's a look at some additional higher level topics that deal with atomic theory. In our next group of programs, we'll focus on transition metals and their periodicity. Thanks for watching.